use of technology can really uh, impact the uh, agribus in Kenya and especially uh, it can reduce the food scarcity that we are we are going through at the moment and high food prices and an irrigation solutions provider and uh, we provide uh, modern irrigation solutions to smallholder farmers that includes drip irrigation uh, kits uh, our custom which we have made ourselves uh, sprinkler irrigation kits that we call mimetic and uh, and button dripper system we've been in existence since 2019 and we've done several projects in kenya and in uganda and uh, for many small farmers and also medium and large scale farmers. We're actually trying to reduce the food scarcity that's uh, happening at most, uh, in many parts of the country and it's happening because of the climate change and again because of the, uh, the changes in the weather patterns. So with technology we can have, uh, we can be food secure and uh, the smallholder farmers can assist uh, the country achieve its food security targets. And that's what we are trying to assist in as a company. Okay, drip irrigation is a modern way of irrigating the, uh, the shambas. As you know, because of climate change, the rain-fed irrigation uh, system is becoming uh, unsustainable. So farmers can no longer rely on the rains to produce uh, sufficient crops. So drip irrigation is a, is a micro-irrigation system which drips water into the plant and uses minimum water. And again, it uses gravity, so it's a clean te technology and uh, again uh, assist in uh, conserving the, the energy both energy and water. We chose this because we saw the impact uh, climate change is having on small-scale farmers especially and because they don't have a lot of this information so we started uh, creating awareness and right now many farmers are warming up to, to this technology because people are seeing the rain cycles have changed, the, the climate uh, cycle has changed so if you don't use irrigation it's no longer sustainable to do farming the way it used to be done before. So we saw a very big opportunity to assist uh, small farmers who are the majority who assist, uh, food producers in, in East Africa to adapt to this technology. We realized that about uh, when we started about three years ago and uh, as I said we wanted to solve this challenge of uh, adapting to climate change and uh, we saw there are a lot of struggle especially on the smallholder farmers across the country. Uh, crops were failing you know, rains are failing, like now this year also the rains have failed. So many farmers are struggling. So the farmers who have uh, warmed up to this technology are the ones who are doing well. And we want to create more awareness as we go along so that more smallholder farmers come on board and uh, we, create, we solve the food insecurity issues that we are having. And we do capacity building for farmers for trainings, both online and also live when we, whenever we visit. And uh, through this awareness training with our technical team, we have educated many farmers, even groups, we bring them together and we try to train them and uh, for them to see the benefits. Like now we are setting up a demo uh, training center in Matu, where it's an arid area, so many farmers there can learn how this irrigation uh, works. Okay, this is a simple illustration of drip masses in East Africa how it works, how it normally happens on the side, in the field, when you have a tank, piping, and up to the drip line, full insulation. So you start with the, you need to have a tank. It depends, there are different, various types of tank. You may have like a 20,000 liters tank. So the water comes from the tank and then go to the, through the system that you have on the end. So this system, actually this is the tank that you're having. Water will go through this, the pipe. We have the main pipe where you're going to have right here. So once the water comes from the tank, it go to this, you have a mini valve, go to the pipe, where it go, this is the system, the water is going to go through. It will go to the filter, where you have a, we need to filter the water first before it goes, because there are many particles, soil particles and some, which can block the pipes. So once you have this one, this, uh, this filter, water will go through this, and it depends what type of irrigation you're doing right away. You may be doing either you're planting trees or you're planting uh, vegetables. So water will go through this, uh, go through this uh, filtration where we have a filter here, and then it'll go to the pipe, main pipe. There's a mini valve here which you're going to open. Water will go through this pipe.
through way to the main pipe, which is the main pipe is here. Then thereafter, we have something called a main valve. So this main valve, you will open it. The moment you open this main valve, it's going to split water, which will go to the sprinkler, which you have right here. This is a half an inch sprinkler. We have different types of sprinklers. You have a half an inch, you have a quarter. So it depends which type of farm, at the size of the farm and the size of the way you are growing the crops. And if you are using it for irrigation, like a drip, this, uh, the water will go through the here. We have here a drip line, which is the 16 centimeter. We have different types of drip line, as we explained earlier. We have the one which is used for the trees and the one used for, for, for crops. Like the, so we have the soft and the hard one. The hard one, you may use this one either for button drips or you use it for either crops, like vegetables, as we explained earlier. So water will go through this pipe, main pipe, you open, if you open this pipe, uh, this mini valve, uh, 16 mm mini valve, the water will go through here, and then it will go directly to the sprinkler, which will start splashing water for irrigation. We met uh, KHSE last year when we joined the Green Bees uh, incubation program, and uh, it's been very supportive. So we've held several sessions. We did the business plan together and also the, we, we, we worked on the website, the revamping, and uh, up to now the mentorship for the bookkeeping and, uh, and financials is ongoing, which we are, we, are, we are continuing. And we've received several support also, in, uh, we've attended several exhibitions and, uh, and events where farmers uh, were participating, which we got even quite some clients, that we got some programs from there. So it's been very supportive and we're very thankful and uh, still we're ongoing. We had this, uh, ch challenges especially on uh, record keeping, which we are now, uh, we have streamlined. Also trademark, it was a big challenge for us. We've now registered the trademark, it's ongoing. And, uh, and also our website was revamped to make it an e-commerce and uh, to make it more friendly for the users, which has also attracted for us a, a lot of clients. Yeah, so we, we, well, there was quite some improvement since uh, we started that journey and we are, we are, we are getting grateful. We've introduced the uh, water harvesting also technologies. Like now the demo we are setting up in Matu, it's uh, for catching the rainwater and conserving it and then using irrigation to now use the water uh, wisely. Because what happens in the arid areas, the rains uh, come once in a while, like they don't come uh, so often. So whenever they come, the farmers need to catch as much water as possible and then they use it over the period when it is dry season. So our technology helps in both conserving and using of the water. And that's how we are trying to assist in the, to adapt to climate change. In the youth, it's a very good opportunity, agribusiness, if you use technology, it can be a very good uh, source of employment and source of income. Because uh, agribusiness is where the potential is. It's not just farming, it's processing, uh, it's cold storage, uh, post-harvest, uh, uh, solutions can also be provided to this farmer, so there's a whole opportunity across this uh, chain. And uh, all that uh, uh, chain, you can use clean technology, and that's what we are trying to adv advocate for. And the youth can be employed in that sector quite a lot. I'd like to tell KCC and the need to keep up the efforts. Uh, it's a worthwhile effort. And as businesses, uh, agribusiness businesses like ours come up and uh, get support, we also support a lot of uh, farmers and a lot of youth, and also a lot of women who are coming into the, this farming using the technology and they're getting employed. So the impact across the chain is quite huge, I want to tell them, and they continue with this effort and support companies like ours to support these farmers and uh, the youth and the women to venture into agribusiness profitably and to make money.